Hi hobby friends, let's talk about green again. A couple of weeks ago, I continued the underpainting series with a look at green, but I also mentioned that I wanted to look at the warm side of green as well. Well, a little Eldari release interrupted that, but I didn't want to leave it too long before continuing the series, so here is warm green. If you haven't taken a look at any of the underpainting series, I recommend giving them a watch to get a handle on the whys and wherefores of the technique. I want to add as well that a viewer asked me to open a Discord channel, which I've duly done, and another said I should tell people about it, so you can find an invite link below. I have basically zero idea of how to use Discord, but if you fancy having a chat about techniques, sharing your work, or just chewing the proverbial fat, pop in and say hello. Alright, enough preamble, let's take a look at some minis. Let's go crazy bold today. I'm going to start with neon pink as my first undercoat. I'm getting confident enough with this underpainting process to really start pushing the boat out, and I'm really curious to see what ostensibly crazy options might look like. That said, a little consistency will give a more balanced picture too, so the next guy gets an old favourite. This is the muted blue colour that Molotow call Petrol. I'll be interested to see what cooler colours do under a warmer green. Perennial favourite, Purple next. Purple has consistently given at least interesting and often good looking results under all the other colours, so it's something of an auto-include at this point. I'm also fishing around for a very particular, plaguey sort of green today, just for fun. Underpainting is good at rendering the sort of ambiguous colour we associate with the rottiest of the traitor legions, and I thought maybe I could get there starting with a burgundy base. Last but not least, this rather appealing shade of turquoise. If you saw the last green video, you'll already know that this is an area of the colour wheel that's right up my street, but it's also a bit of a weird one to put under a warmer green. Let's see how it turns out. Next up, the light sketches. Pink is getting a blast of yellow. Blue is getting a spritz of sky blue. Over purple, I'm spraying a softer peach pink. And over Burgundy, another regular visitor to the series, Lobster Orange. Finally, to keep the tradition of trying to find a metallic underpaint technique I like, Turquoise gets a very, very light dusting of bronze. The contrast is not quite there on some of these though, so let's revisit the first blue guy, who gets a secondary highlight of sand yellow. I find the mix of sand yellow and sky blue really natural, and not just because of memories of beach holidays. Sand yellow really does seem like a feasible final highlight colour for certain kinds of blue. We're also going to hit the burgundy guy with, why not, let's go crazy, with fluorescent orange ink. We're here to experiment, and nothing ventured, nothing gained. One final step to push contrast, a Prussian blue undershade on the shiny chap. With that done, it's finally time to get green, and for today's green, we're going with Daler & Rowney's Olive Green Ink. For the first time, I'm using a semi-transparent ink rather than a fully transparent one, and to be honest, this is mostly because the warm part of the green spectrum isn't particularly well represented in perfectly transparent inks. That said, thinning it down and going gently should still afford us plenty of interaction, so I'm not too worried. Okay, that's all of them done, so let's take a look at them before we get stuck into detailing. First, the blue guy. Thanks to that sand yellow highlight, I think he's managed to retain his warmth pretty well in the highlights, but the shadows and the bounce light effect is definitely on the cool side. Next up is Mr. Pink, and this guy is reaching out almost into yellow. I specifically left the green layer on the very top surface very, very thin to try and demonstrate that yellow is a great highlight for green, and I think he still reads more or less as green here because of the strong olive tone on his legs. What do you think? Maybe it's just me, but I would never in a million years have guessed that this guy was base coated in purple and pink. It is such an interesting colour combo for underpainting, a real chameleon of a colour. Okay, the weird one next. I'm not really sure what this burgundy and fluorescent orange guy is, but certainly I'd say he's interesting. 
More of a chromatic contrast and less of a value contrast than I'd have liked, but I'll reserve final judgement till the detailing is done. And here, at last, a metallic underpaint job I can live with. The sheen is really, really subtle, but still adds a, a little something. Plus the base green on this guy is pretty nice too, so all round a thumbs up from me. All the guys get the usual detailing, of which I seem to have only managed to film the black base coating and a little silver, and when that's all done, the only bit that's left is the basing and some photos. First up, our blue friend. For someone who started life as a beach holiday, this guy has ended up with some real salamander vibes. Some of those deepest shadows are still fairly cool, and the bounce light effect is still pretty blue, but the zingy lime-coloured top light overall keeps this guy in the warm yellow world for me. Fluorescent next, and what a weird colour he's ended up. Fluoro ink in the eyes was always going to be a winner, but I'm not convinced it's done much in the underpainting that any other orange wouldn't also have done. By the way, if anyone knows why my camera makes edge highlights look blobby and weird, I'd really, really like to know. Although he ended up a little darker than the traditional Death Guard green I was fishing for here, I don't actually hate this. A few tweaks and this could be a really interesting, understated scheme for someone. Pink next, and another zingy guy here. I've been trying to paint the eye lenses the colour of the base coats for this series, but had a bit of a brain fail on this one, so apologies for that. Although the highlights on this guy are pretty powerful, around the back he still has some earthy tones going on, so lots of variety and movement in the colour here. Purple, and another muted but interesting result. Not a showstopper, but certainly serviceable. In particular, I'm feeling the earthy, yellowish tones of the upper highlights, and the somewhat ghostly colour in the bounce light seen around his collar and backpack here. And finally, Mr. Shiny, who, for once, looked better in his video appearance than he does in his stills. I love the texture the light metallic coat gives here, and the sheen he does have doesn't overpower or make the mini look plasticky. Okay, that's the lot of them. Which one do you like? Any factions in the 40k universe and beyond that you can see yourself using these shades of green on? Let me know in the comments below, and head over to the Discord if you fancy a chat. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.